Hey guys, it's Ken Marlin, the Windows Champ, and I am back with another video. I definitely wanted to give you guys an overview of the latest Microsoft Windows Server IoT 2019. I put together um, the info here for a roadmap and a feature comparison, followed by all of the part numbers from pretty much every channel that you can procure this product. I'm going to be speaking specifically about the server IoT version of Windows Server, but most of all these features because the products, the products are the same, ultimately, other than the license terms being different. This video ultimately covers that server product as well. And at the end, I'll give you all the part numbers. Um, you'll also, I'll also cover all the dates, end of life, end of support. So if you guys are thinking about migrating and getting off an older version of server to 2019, this is definitely the video for you. I'm going to jump into this and move really quickly. I put together a roadmap and I love roadmaps that have useful information like the end of support dates and the end of life dates. Now, the end of life dates on this is specifically for the OEM IoT embedded channel, which has a much longer life cycle. For most of these products, it's a 15 year life cycle versus in the regular channel uh, where these products like Server 2008, 2008 R2, 2012, 2012 R2, they've all been end of life already. They're already gone. If you went to buy those today, you'd want to be very careful because they haven't been manufactured or made available from Microsoft for quite a number of years. But in the OEM embedded channel, they still are available for quite a few more years. So starting with 2008, huge important date, end of support, January 14, 2020. That means no more hot fixes, no more security patches, no more tech support. Um, and that is the end of the extended support for that product. If, if, if you've read any articles about the extended, extended support that Microsoft's offering that you can go directly to them, please know it's extremely expensive. Um, and it, it, they ultimately don't want you to buy it. They want you to move on to a newer product. And when you find out how much it costs, that's probably what you'll definitely do. Um, but here in the OEM Embedded Channel, that product is available. It doesn't go end of life until 2023. The server 2012 and 2012 R2, end of support is not till 2023 and end of life 2027. Jumping down to server 2016, the last OEM product that had a 15 year life cycle. So you can see the dates go way out there for end of support, end of life. Starting with server IoT 2019, they brought it back in from a 15 year life to a 10 year life. So please know that all Microsoft um, products have a 10 year support, no matter which channel that you procure it through. But when it comes to end of life, they, in, the, in the embedded channel, it was 15 years. But now for Windows 10 and Server IoT, it's a not, not 15 anymore, it's 10. We can also estimate that Server IoT 2022 will launch um, in about three years, um, but that is completely unofficial. But as, if you're an OEM building devices, you definitely want to be locked in for a product that's going to be available for many years and has support for many years. So from a very high level, you have your Intelligent Edge, Microsoft Azure, and you have uh, Intelligent Cloud uh, with Azure and Azure Services, and then you've got your Intelligent Edge with all of your IoT devices and including your IoT server, uh, which in many cases, you'll have all of those IoT devices talking back to a server to collect all that data and give you real-time performance, not real-time, but complete full-on performance. Um, and this is where this product comes into play extreme performance with this product. If we take a look at the maximum specs, 64 CPU sockets with unlimited cores. Now, one thing I want to note here is this product had, uh, with 2012 R2, it also had a maximum of 64 CPU sockets, but it could only do up to 320 physical cores. And then with server 2016, it was bumped to f up to 512 physical cores. And now with 2019, you get unlimited cores. So you could build a server with, with ultimately uh, over a thousand physical cores and Windows Server 2019 would be able to support it and run on it and give you the performance that you need. Now, I love comparing against the older versions. So you can see a lot of these newer features that a lot of people have been wanting and, and uh, waiting for was clearly they were not available back in Server 2008 R2 days. 2012 R2 that we did launch storage spaces with that. 2016 they improved upon it and now 2019, three years of additional improvement. So when you see these features, ultimately Microsoft continues to improve them, tweak them, make them better. So even though they were in the 2016 edition, they have been greatly improved. Once the highlight is your Linux containers, which is brand new with 2019. 
They basically allow application admins to manage both Windows and Linux applications on the same environment, reducing your management overhead. Um, and then you've got the Windows subsystem on Linux at the bottom, uh, as well as you know your server containers, which have been improved along with Credential Guard and BitLocker and quite a bit more security, which we will touch on right now. From a security perspective, again, the product is had a, a ton of focus put on enhancing the security capabilities. So the big one that came out with Server 2016 was shielded VMs for Windows. With 2019, they've added shielded VMs for Linux, as well as a uh, host guardian service, HGS offline mode. So real quickly on those, um, if, if, if someone got the administrator uh, credentials and got access to the administrator account, or was an administrator on a server, they could typically in, in years past get access to uh, the data and that are on the VMs. Now with shielded VMs, you can prevent that. So even if someone has an administrator rights that doesn't give them the ability to get to the data on a shielded VM. And there was another uh, situation where someone could copy off a VM and take it with them and then run it on another server and get access to it that now has been fixed with the host guardian service, which basically prevents shielded VM from running unless it's been uh, verified that it's uh, you know secure and in the right place, keeps it from moving to um, a, you know a server that doesn't allow it. So jumping forward, let's talk about uh, comparing IoT server with regular server. So clearly, an IoT server is a fixed function appliance. It's a server that has an application installed on it, and that server is dedicated to it. Um, now, it can't be a general use application like Exchange or SharePoint. It has to be something like software that controls all the lighting in a building, um, or software that controls uh, the fire alarm or the sprinkler system, or um, you know, it's got to be some kind of an application that turns that server into a fixed function appliance where regular Windows Server is for general use. You can load anything you want on it. It can be Exchange, it can be SharePoint, it can be whatever you want on it. Um, in the IoT space, we have some different SKUs, which we'll, we'll show you here in a second, as I'm gonna cover some of the part numbers. And then very important, we have a new Callus model, which allows you to um, basically remove the license terms that require client access licenses. So the server, if you build an appliance, you can get it in a Callus option where no cows are required. If you're interested in that, make sure and reach out to me. Now let's wrap this up with every single part number available in the channel, multiple channels for Windows Server. This here are, are all of your OEM IoT embedded parts for Server 2019. So a um, lot of options here, 16 core, 20 core, 24 core. You've got your essentials, your telco, your storage server, your callus, and then all your cow options at the bottom. I hope to have a video in the future that I'll cover storage server, but now here are all your OEM IoT part numbers for server IoT 2019. And then lastly, um, here are your OEM system builder, which is for general use. Um, and then I'm also including the retail package part number, which typically you always avoid, but uh, we, we were able to offer it as well. And lastly, your open volume channel. So these are your no level uh, minimum quantity five requires end user uh, option. And that's those are sold in two core license options with a 16 core minimum purchase or a 16 core base and a two core add-on. Same for data center, 16 core. And you've got your cows there. So if you're, if you're needing a Windows Server 2019 part number, I've given it to you. For pricing, reach out to us here at Arrow. I've got my email here. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the fixed function appliance OEM, signing up for that program, getting access to this, these products, um, we can definitely get you a price quote on that, show you the price difference, show you that you give you the longer life on the product and access to the full bits for testing. We here at Arrow are your IoT uh, experts and I am your Windows champ. Thank you guys for watching.